Hello, everybody. I'm Zhang Yue. Today, I'm very glad to give you a short presentation about the water use in intercropping and semi-arid conditions. In this presentation, I'd like to introduce you why intercropping is popular worldwide. Then, could intercropping increase water use efficiency or save water? Next is about the reasons why intercropping could improve water productivity. And finally, the new approach for upscaling from field to regional levels. OK, let's start. As we know, the climate is changing. In historical 50 years, the climate had a warm and dry trend in northern China. Well, intercropping is a more feasible cropping system to reduce the negative impact of climate change. The global meta-analysis results show that Intercropping could significantly increase the land and resource use efficiencies and reduce wind erosion. So the first thing we are caring about is, could intercropping increase water use efficiency? First, let's see how to evaluate water use efficiency. At crop value, it equals to crop yield in the intercrop or soil system divide the actual water use per unit area of whole system during the growing season. Here, WU means water uptake. And we should notice that in an intercropping system, different crop species of water uptake is very difficult to quantify. Doing so, we usually use crop modeling. And in semi-arid conditions, surface, surface runoff didn't occur because most, most of the experimental field was quite flat. And each plot was enclosed by a 50, 15 centimeter high rate. Capillary rice water is negligible when the underground water table is one meter below the root zone. And the water table was far below the root zone. Finally, deep drainage was also negligible because there were rarely heavy rings in this region. Therefore, the actual water used during different growth stage was calculated using a simplified water balance equation. Here is the equation. Water uptake equals to precipitation plus the soil water content at starting time minus the soil water content at ending time. Here, we also need to notice that if we calculate the water use efficiency in soil systems, there is no problem. However, the in intercropping system, the water use is related to the land use proportion. Comparing water use efficiency in intercropping and soil stands has some limitations because it is different between the actual and the assigned land use proportions. For above ground, the difference might be very small and we can see it by eyes. But for below ground, the overlap of roots might be very big and we don't know. Here, we take the water use efficiency in maize soybean and maize peanut intercropping systems as an example. Considering that the intercrop had half maize and half legumes, the expected water use efficiency of both species in intercrop is half, the value, half of the value in the corresponding soil crop. 
So maize water use efficiency in the intercrop was significantly above this expected value, indicating that intercropping increased the water use efficiency of maize at crop species level. However, due to this limitation I mentioned above, generally compare the water use efficiency between intercrops and the source stands are okay, but it has some uncertainty. Therefore, we need a better method to evaluate system water use efficiency. At system level, we usually use water equivalent ratio. Here we can see this formula. It is about the calculation about water equivalent ratio at system level. Here, y into A and y into B means yield of crop A or B in the intercrop. W int means the water use of the whole intercropping system. Here, y so A and y so B means yield of crop A or B in source stands. And W u so A and W u so B means water use of source stands of A and B. As we can see from the field experimental results, maize lithium intercropping system also increased the water use efficiency at system level. As we can see, the WER of these two maize lithium systems are higher than one, indicating that there is a significant water use advantage in maize peanut and maize soybean intercropping system. When crops intercrop with trees, the partial water equivalent ratio of tree is around 1. While a contribution of partial water equivalent ratio of crops results in the water equivalent ratio at system higher than 1. Next, the second thing we care about is that intercrops take up more or less water. To calculate delta water use, we have two methods. One is water saving per land proportion, and it is calculated based on the land proportion, which are PA and PB in this equation. Here, delta WU means delta water use, and the WU int means the actual water use per unit area of the whole system during the growing season. And the WU saw A and the WU saw B means the actual water use of crop A or B in soil system. However, using this method might overestimate the result because there is difference between the actual and the assigned land use proportion. Therefore, we developed another method, which is water saving per unit production. Here, in this equation, we use the partial LER instead of land proportion. And uh, this formula expresses the hypothesis that the expected water use in intercrop is proportional to the water uses of other species in monocrop and the partial LER realized in intercrop. Another way to express this hypothesis is, is that expected water use in the intercrop is the sum of expected water use by the component species calculated as their observed yield in intercrop divided by the water use efficiency as determined in soil crop. And using method 2, we found that maize peanuts, maize soybean, 
oats vetch and potato vetch, these four intercropping systems consumed less water for producing the same yield compared with soil stands, indicating that cropping, intercropping saved water. So why does intercropping could improve water productivity? The first reason is the interspersic complementarity of water requirements of component crops. Mixing a species with high water requirements and a species with lower requirements may give water use advantages and reduce the risk of yield reduction as a result of drought during the green feeding stage. Here we also take the maize peanut and maize soybean intercropping systems as an example. In this maize legume intercrop, maize is the high water requirement crop, while soybean has a lower water requirement than peanut. So the vine and the water equivalent ratio was higher in maize soybean than in maize peanut. Simply, in crop batch intercrop, batch has a high water requirement and more competitive for water than potato, resulting in a high land and water equivalent ratio. However, oats competed for water more strongly than batch, resulting in a not significantly significant water and land use advantage in intercropping system. The second reason is the complementary water use in time and space. We analyzed the daily water use during early and late stage in maize legume and maize pea intercropping systems. As we can see, during the early stage, the water uptake of soil legume is lower than that of intercrop and lower than that of soil maize. Well, during the late stage, the water uptake of intercrop is lower than that of soil legume. Similarly, during the early stage, the water uptake of intercrop maize is lower than that of intercropped field pea. Well, during the late stage, the water uptake of intercropped field pea is lower than that of what uh, intercropped maize, indicating that there is a temporal complementarity in water use. And also, we measure the soil water content at different places to explore the special complementarity. In maize pea intercrop, the complementary distribution of roots might exist because we found a special difference in water uptake in maize and pea intercropping. And also we explored the water use in agroforestry systems. Here, I'd like to introduce you why we like to use agroforestry systems in Liaoning province. Because during the initial years of the tree stands, it is not productive. Competition between the trees is still small, and the space between the trees is not used. So, agroforestry is a solution. It is a good way to prevent desertification and boost the income of farmers. From the field experiments, we found that the water content of the upper one meter was much lower in agroforestry systems than in a soil stem, indicating that the intercrop Intercraft crop extracted water that is not utilized by the trees in a soil stand. 
and also trees absorb a little water from the upper soil later layer in paths between the tree lines, providing opportunity for complementary water uptake by crop. And thirdly, the reason is intercropping is a good way to reducing to reduce water and wind erosion. Generally, half of the grassland in Inner Mongolia suffer from derogation and wind erosion. At east part of agropastoral ecotone, the value is more than half, and the heavy soil erosion grassland is nearly 10%. As we can see in these two photos, there is a terrible loss of water and soil after rain in Inner Mongolia. Well, intercropping systems increase the water by storage of snow during winter due to the residue cover comparing with soil potato. We can see in this photo, we can see the obvious comparison of the snow storage between soil and intercropping system. And here are some typical, typical intercropping systems in Inner Mongolia, such as oat potato, oat pea, and sunflower potato intercropping system. All the results I mentioned above are at field level. Well, the model approach gives us a good way to upscale from field to regional level. In intercropping systems, we can use FST model to calculate transpiration and evaporation based on canopy cover in intercropping system. We simulated the water, soil water content and the daily water use in wheat cotton intercrops using this model. And the simulated results showed a, a good agreement with observed results. We also simulated transpiration evaporation, and water use efficiency in jujube trees, cotton intercrop using this model. In addition, Epsim is also a useful tool to do this. We simulated the water strife in mesclagium intercrop in three crop growth stage, and know that the water stress during flowering to maturity of intercrop maize was lower than that of sown maize, and it might be a possible reason of reducing the climate risk of maize. Okay, that is all my presentation. Thanks a lot to our cooperation team, and thank you very much for your listening.